Good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be with you again. Uh, just uh, want to start us off with a, with a quick prayer. Father, I just thank you that you're good all the time, that you are better than we think. And uh, I pray that you'll open our eyes to see Jesus, Holy Spirit, that in your light there is light. So I pray that your truth will be revealed to us. Um, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, last week we uh, touched on a lot, a couple of things, uh, bouncing back and forth. And uh, this morning I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited to jump back in it and uh, keep just keep just opening up and keep keep sitting on the on the righteousness and uh, understanding that because you know when Paul is speaking of in uh, in Romans where he's saying receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness in Romans five. It's, it, 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 that's, a, that's almost like a continual, a continual receiving. We want to keep receiving it. We want to keep applying it. We want to keep, keep it in front of us. Okay, so uh, um, let's, uh, let's, let's bring it, um, let's bring it to, a, to a, 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 the direction I want to take it is um, getting back in to a, Kind of, kind of seeing, seeing that righteousness kind of in your own life. So, if you think about it, um, the battle of the mind and how the enemy comes at you, like I kind of touched on last week, is it's he's, he's dropping thoughts in there. He's playing the mind games, and basically, what it comes down to is, like, if the enemy, if the devil can keep you defeated, like if he can keep you down there where you are not making you know, not realizing who you are or not, not uh, believing uh, what, who you are, then uh, you're, you're no threat. You're no, you're no threat to the kingdom of darkness. Like, we can, we, he can control you. Like, if you put yourself in the, in the shoes of, uh, if you're making war against so- someone, like, you want to do everything they can to, to just get them to, you know, believe the, the worst in a sense about themselves. So, uh, what I've, what I've realized is that we, uh, we have, our emotions have been so like in the religious system, you get bombarded with like all kinds of stuff about what you, uh, like guilt and shame and fear. And we try to kind of keep it away. And, you know, our, our attention is on those things again. Our attention is not on Jesus. We see, it's, it's constantly seeing stuff in our lives, constantly looking to stuff that's going on inside of us and around us, our circumstances, our sickness, our breakthrough. Like, and we don't see on Jesus. We're not looking unto Jesus. We, we're not seeing Him who is seated and has accomplished it for us. We don't understand that that is all just distractions. That is all just a ploy to get you to be incompetent in a sense strong word but um, so uh, this morning in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 35 verse 34 uh, Paul says that awake to righteousness and sin no more now that immediately brings us to the story of like reference in a sense like you think about Jesus that is what he said to the woman caught in adultery um, and uh, if we go through the story, he is, uh, you know, he, they drag this poor woman that is probably, you know, what's going through her mind, like <laughs> having seen that kind of stuff and know, knows what her end is right now. And they drag her to the temple and right there in front of Jesus, they throw her down. And uh, they're like, you know, wanting, to, wanting him to judge her in a sense. And we know the story, Jesus kind of stoops down, he rides in the ground and he gets up and then he's like, you know, those with, with, without sin, they even cast the first stone. Then he goes down and he rides again. It's, um, and it's a very, very um, interesting story because apparently if you go to that specific spot where Jesus did this, where, where this all happened, it's not ground as like dirt, but it's it's actually stone. So it's almost like in that moment, it's such a crucial uh, story for us as believers because in that moment, it's like the condemnation, the condemnation is coming at this woman. Like she needs to be condemned to death. She needs to die. 
And Jesus is, is basically stooping down. He's writing on stone with his finger. And that brings you remembrance the story of, who, of, God, of Moses and God writing on the tablets. Because Jesus did it twice. Moses did it twice, referencing maybe the law in that situation. And the law brings the condemnation. And so now we're, now we're looking at this picture of, you know, these guys dropping their stones, kind of realizing that none of them can attain righteousness through the law. None. And Jesus turns to her, and out of the most gentleness, most loving, most extravagant giver, he tells her, where, where are those who condemn you? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. First, first comes the neither do I condemn you, the no condemnation. Then follows the sin no more. Once, once you realize your position in Christ, your unshakable righteousness gift that is the essence of your being right now, the sin no more is what the fruit is that follows out of your life. The sin no more is the, is, is, it's, it's, it flows out of that place. It is righteousness is righteousness is your identity as the rock you stand on and out of out of that right believing out of that understanding that god justifies the ungodly and because of faith in in the gospel in jesus that jesus has done this you 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 got the gift of righteousness and out of that place fl flows all, all the other stuff, all the promises of God, any promise of God that you can think of. If you, if, you, if you close your eyes and you remind yourself, like, I am righteous by the blood of Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You remind yourself of that, you remind, and then you bring up a promise of God you find yourself not trying to make that or believe that promise into existence. You, you find yourself resting in the, in, the, in the love of a good God and His promises to you. The promises becomes, th you know, out of this flows, flows everything in a sense, like I mentioned, but the, the promises point back to like, because you're righteous, this is yours. Because you're righteous, this is yours. And, and you can now rest in, you can rest in the finished work. You can rest that this righteousness, these promises aren't unattainable. These promises aren't something you have to attain. All these promises are gifts, are just yes and amen now. Like, yes, I, I agree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe that that promise is mine now. Because he who is my righteousness is seated in the heavenly places at the right hand of God, and he shall not be moved. I am eternally righteous. I am eternally righteous. I am completely and utterly forgiven. Ah, it's like the, the forgiveness, the way God gives it, is basically like a picture of you standing under a waterfall of continual forgiveness. Like, sin, sin is not, sin is not covered. Like in the Old Testament when they had to sacrifice the blood of bulls and goats once a year, and then sin gets covered for a year. Sin is completely taken away. You are no longer under the law. The law has nothing on you. And 
the law is the strength of sin. The law is what you know really brings in that condemnation. And so therefore, for, so therefore, <laughs> there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. There is no condemnation. And if you live your life with no condemnation, what would that look like? How, how good is your gospel? What, what work, what works do you still need to add to your gospel? What do you need to add to what Jesus has done in your gospel? Like, these are questions you've got to ask yourself. You've got to come back to, to understand, to help yourself see, to renew your mind, to reveal where in your thinking are you, are you stuck? Where in your thinking does the enemy have a foothold in? I mean, you, you, you can stay content with what you have. I, um, there's just so much more. There's so much more. Okay, so <sighs> we uh, we <laughs> breathe a little bit there. Whew. The the yeah, that's uh, uh, the, the the wrong beliefs and the wrong thoughts they keep you down, but right believing and right thinking propels you propels you into towards your breakthrough into your destiny propels you into reigning in life and and it's 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 in this in, in this place of of thinking that we really we really want to pay attention to our mind and to to uh, from there our emotions because uh, in the, in the church environment, I, I think like we've we've kind of told people like you know we've kind of leaned on like you know you shouldn't fear or you know guilt and shame is bad you need to push it away um, you feel guilt like you push it away it's like it's almost like you know you're fighting you're just like fighting yourself it's like a dog chasing his tail awake to righteousness guilt shame. Fe- like feeling fear, the emotions that God has made you. God made you amazing and beautiful. And those emotions are not bad. Emotions is not bad. Emotions is a gift to your body. Emotions follows your thinking. If your thinking is bad, the emotion will go down and, and reveal like, hey, this is what you're thinking. Are you feeling guilty? This is what you're thinking. It's, a, it's almost like your emotion is like a flag. You're feeling happy because you're thinking something that the emotion then follows. The emotion is close on the heels of what you're thinking. If that makes, if that makes sense. So, you know, uh, in, I've read studies where people have, not studies, but you know, where people have had accidents or things like that where they then... They don't have the ability to, f- to fear anymore. Or they don't have the ability to feel shame. And you think like, wow, man, that is a Christian's dream. That is the religious system's holy grail right there. But these people were not able to integrate back into society. Because you, you need shame to help guide you within the context of relationships. You need fear to keep you from falling off the edge. And it, it's, it's, it's every single part of you. You need anger to be able to stand up for you as an honorable sentry, reminding you that you are worth it. So the, the emotions is not bad. But if we have the wrong thinking about it, if we see it in a different light, then it's even if, I mean, it's like a little, it's almost like you can have a little bell that the enemy just comes like, oh, this guy starts to, oh, this guy starts to having a little bit too much faith or whatever the case might be, a little too much faith, I don't know, really. <laughs> but anyway, it come, comes and just rings your bell. Oh, you feel guilt. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, I'm so terrible. Oh, there's another incompetent Christian taken out. 
so uh, incompetent. I need to find a different word. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, so basically, you know, if that if that can help you see yourself, see see yourself as beautiful, see, see yourself as fearfully and wonderfully made. God, God. God made Adam and Eve, and then came the fall and sin. And we, even though we don't, we didn't sin. We fell under that curse, and then the law strengthened that. And and so, you know, condemnation and sin was kind of lying dormant during those times. But anyway, case being is. Even us, when we're lost, even those people that's out there that have never heard of the gospel or don't understand uh, the, the grace of Jesus. It's like the woman who, who swept all night to find the lost coin. Because even though the coin was lost, it never lost its value. Like you are valuable. Your emotions are beautiful. Like God... God looks at you and he is just undone. You're his child in that sense. Like this, how do you see yourself? Where, how, how, where do you start to start letting the Lord change your mindsets? Repentance, metanoia, changing the th way we think, returning to the pinnacle of thinking. Jesus is better than you think. Jesus is better than you think. Hebrews 4 reminds us, and Hebrews 4, 11, it says, Be diligent, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Kind of earlier, the talk, uh, previous verses, he talks about works, you know, working, working to get something out that I don't think I really it's a message on its own there putting yourself under back under the curse by works but be diligent to enter the rest rest and believe Jesus they come to him Jesus what shall we do to do the works of God this is the work of God. Believe in the one who he has sent. Believe. Rest in the finished work. Believe what he says about you. Rest and believe. The enemy comes with a condemnation. Now you, you haven't done enough. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Rest and believe. Rest and believe. Yeah, yeah, you, people, you know, you can't do that. You can't just, you got to do something. You got to, you got to rest and believe. Is he, is he better than you think? Is this gospel, this nearly too good to be true news? How good is your gospel? How mind-blowing is your gospel? The, the blessings of Abram is for those who believe. What did Abram believe? That God justifies the ungodly through faith in believing the gospel. <laughs> believing Jesus has done it. That it is finished. That believing Jesus took the sin of the world 
everything past, present, future unto himself. He became sin so that we can become righteous. That righteousness, that gift, we believe it gets imputed to us as a gift. That was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to sit in that. There's no rush. There's no rush. He paid the, the most ult ultimate price. God, who created all, the king of the universe, who holds it all in the palm of his hands, loved us by sending his son, giving his son. And at that cross, his justice was satisfied so that his mercy can flow. How good is your gospel? The enemy, the, the, has got so many avenues of distracting us, radio waves, news, whatever the case might be, so that we take our eyes off of Jesus throughout the Old Testament, all those sacrifices, all those the grain offerings, the this, the that, like everything points to Jesus. Do you see Jesus? God says, ask and I shall be given to you. Ask for wisdom and he will give you wisdom. Ask for understanding. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our minds. Rest and believe. Rest. If you don't know how to rest, if you don't know how to believe this, if you feel like, listen, I hear it, but it's like it's not landing, like I just like I can't remember it. Just, just take the one thing that you do have that is standing out to you that is being breathed on and just just stand on that just hold on to that holy spirit will always breathe on truth um you know when 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 truth is spoken it's like you and and this is where paul speaks about having our senses trained having our emotions trained when 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 truth is spoken, Holy Spirit breathes on it and you're like, you feel love, joy, and peace. You don't feel condemnation. That's why, that's why it's like so critical to break open John 16 that Holy Spirit will come and convict the world of sin. So that singular, like last week, it's sin of not believing because if Jesus was on the cross and he took away he took all the sins of the world upon himself so all the sin in a bucket close the lid taken off the table 
There's only one thing that remains. To believe or not to believe. That's your one choice. So, Holy Spirit convicts you of unbelief when you're not believing. Hey, you need Jesus. You cannot do this. You cannot attain this yourself. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need a Savior. You need a Savior. And then you believe. And when you believe, you're at that point, your belief is that God justifies the ungodly and makes and makes him righteous. Like it's not something you can attain. And then Holy Spirit convicts you of righteousness. This is who you are. This is who you are. Just look to Jesus. This is who you are. I go to the Father because you see me no more. Holy Spirit points you to Jesus then. This is who you are. And the enemy tries to mess with your mind. And he reminds you, the evil one has judged. His head has been crushed. God has crushed him under your feet. You're above him. So, I mean, everyone is dealing with something different. And uh, a lot of Christians are still not seeing the blessings of Abram in their lives. And we're going we're gonna to see that. We're going to see that change as people start changing their mindsets. Starts understanding their identity, their right standing with God. You know, it's not something that we just hear and declare. Like we, we can't, we can't really make it. If we don't stand on the word, like the word. Be, how can I put this? A lot of us kind of like hear truth and we just declare it. But we, we got we to gotta, we gotta make that, we got we to gotta make that our own. It's out of that place of, you know, in, in that process that I was like, for me, it's like when I'm on right standing, when I'm righteous, like I can see that promise and I can then, and then I realize, oh, that promise is for me. Or then the enemy comes and tells me, as an example, hey, you're growing, you're just, you're getting old. Look at your, look at your, you know, whatever the case might be. I'll, in this situation, I'll say, look at your feet. Look at, like, look at how your shoes are starting to push your toes sideways. Oh, that's, that's old age. That's people, that's old people. They start having like feet like wings. And for any old people out there, I apologize. This is an example. Oh, not old people, but people, <laughs> people with that. Um, the, uh, and in that, mo in that moment, what I, what, what I was reminded of is like beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. And I, and I just, I had a choice there and I like, oh, well, there's the good news versus the accusations and versus the condemnation. Hopefully that was not a gross example, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, bring, bring a little context there. We... You know, and, and from that point, it's like, oh, I, 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 I declare that. I kind of, I just, I, I just thank the Lord for that. And like my mind shift, shifts. It's almost like now because I'm standing on righteousness, now that I know my right standing, now that I have a rock to stand on, whatever the enemy, th and I kind of see, I see what the enemy is. I can, I can start understanding like, oh, he's doing this, oh, he's doing that. And then I can grab hold of that and I can flip it on him. And he throws it, oh, you gotta, you gotta do more, you gotta do, you're doing enough, you gotta do, you have, there's not enough time, there's not enough time, you're overwhelmed, you know. And then I can flip that on him, like, thank you, Lord, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Here I can rest that you've got me, that I'm not the one that's producing this, that you, gives me, you give me the power to produce whatever it might be. You bless. All the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Uh, blessed will be in the city, blessed will be in the country. Like, I don't make that happen. It's all because of you. It's all because of Jesus in me. Just let it happen. Philip, thank you for that message this morning.
Um, I really like the challenge um, about, you know, how good is your gospel or what's your gospel? Um, and so I think the challenge today for our gather groups is, um, like, what is the gospel that you believe? Is it the gospel that has poured out the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through Jesus, like where everything has been taken care of and, every, and where now we enter into rest and we begin to live from a place of belief? Or what is it? And I think the challenge today is um, to go back and look at our gospel, the gospel that we individually believe and then the gospel that we actually live out in our life. And like, how does it play out in our mind? Like, what's our mindset? Um, do our emotions drive everything? I'm like, I want to reiterate, like Philip said, emotions aren't bad. Emotions, shame, guilt, fear, all those things. It's not that we're trying to get those out of our um, beings. What we're trying to do is see what thought are they tied to. Follow that back up to the thought and go like, why is that there? Um, so I think um, today as we're in our gather groups, Maybe unpack what is the gospel that I believe and that I'm actually living. And also, what are the emotions that uh, overwhelm me in life and what, what thought is that tied back to? Where is that tied back to my believing and how I believe? Um, because at the end of the day, um, right believing will produce right living. Have a great week. Listen, we're going to stay on this. Um, for We're going to stay on this until we... We'll keep coming at it, and so until we continue to to get to the bottom of it, so it's going to be a bit. Um, so have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Mm-hmm.